Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to Colony Ship, a post-Earth role-playing game. As the marketing blurb goes, anyways, um, this is a game inspired by a Heinlein novel. That immediately got my attention because I really like Heinlein, particularly his um, often very interesting takes on politics, not making it the main gist of his novels, instead working them into an overarching narrative. They're very thought-evoking, they make you think about stuff, which I quite enjoy. Anywho, in this case, it is the idea of a generation ship. We are currently in the pits of this generation ship, a lawless area filled with um, sometimes occupied, sometimes empty containers. The Generation Ship was started by a bunch of religious fanatics, who decided that they'd had enough of Earth, frankly, and wanted to venture out to the nearest habitable planet, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, the Promised Land was very, 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 very far away, and so the original generation of religious people have long since died out. Now, the first generation thereafter, you know, they were raised and bred to value their ideals. The mission above all, we must reach the promised land. But as the journey continued and generation after generation was raised aboard the ship, a lot of people started thinking to themselves, you know, I didn't agree to this. I did not agree to living on some kind of boxed in hellhole, where the water tastes like rust and oil, and the only food available is the reconstituted matter created from dead corpses. This is not existence in any way, shape, or form that I like it. And so, a mutiny was launched against the controlling people, the powers that be. They broke into the armory. Let's have a look at the, uh, actually, let me ship map, there we go. They broke into the armory, and they looted the ever-loving shit out of it, grabbing all of the weapons, the grenades, the energy weapons, the blasters, the energy shields, and set about liberating the vessel to the best of their abilities. They caused, as you can see, a great deal of damage, but not actually enough to overthrow the old regime, which led to the worst of all scenarios, really, a stalemate, where the ship was severely damaged in the ensuing chaos and the destruction, but the new regime wasn't really either able to, you know, firm up their own grip of things, and so you ended up in a factional situation of constant hostility and warfare. Nobody won, everybody lost. And so the question is, what now? The situation is worse than ever before. You don't even really have the idea of a unifying mission, but you do need to survive on this vessel that's falling apart. We can have a look at the hydroponics here, for example. The area that used to provide food for everyone is now an overgrown hellhole. Because the scientists figured, you know, life on this promised land might be kinda harsh, and so we need to develop plants and the species robust enough to survive and thrive in this environment so as to give us food. Understandable, but during the mutiny, of course, all of this went berserk. The scientists, a bunch of them just flat out died, and they lost control of the hydroponics deck. And so now all of the hyper-aggressive species of plants and animals bred specifically to be able to survive in hostile environments and breed rapidly have now broken loose, with predictable consequences. And so now you have monstrous, psionic, poisonous frogs wandering the lower levels, and all of the food-producing stuff is an overgrown, fetid jungle. Uh, three, no, two, uh, no, yes, yes, English. Two out of the three hydroponic bays are completely overrun, and so now you just have to deal with primarily eating food made from the reconstituted matter of your dead people. Yeah, that's, um, that's not very good. And 
another interesting thing as well. I know we've been talking a lot about the setting here, not really the gameplay, but the setting itself is really a key part of it. You start out with the usual character creation screen, where you get your stats, your strength, your constitution, dexterity, perception, you know, the usual, and these then in turn affect your uh, derived stats and eventually also your skills. You can tag a skill, which allows it to level up way faster, so that uh, I've tagged the SMG skill, so I level up SMGs much faster than I do biotech. And you level these skills up by doing them, and also potentially by taking feats that might be relevant. We'll get back into this system in just a moment, but this is an interesting one right here, the beliefs system. The ship is now divided into several different competing factions, and you will have reputations with many of these factions before you even meet them by your actions. For example, if you are a religiously minded person, the religiously minded side of the ships will value you more, whilst the more atheist uh, originated people might view you as just the kind of pond scum they've been struggling for years to scrape off the bottom of their boot. Liberty and authority is another one, phobia and philia towards Xeno species is yet another one. You see, the reactors were also severely damaged during the whole uprising, the mutiny, and so now you've got a bunch of mutants operating the reactor core, leading to yet another interesting little question. On the one hand, the mutants are barely even human, they're monstrous, they're horrible looking, and the initial response was just to throw them away or outright kill them. But with the reactors leaking ever more radiation into the rest of the ship, well, the mutants were the only ones able to operate the reactor effectively without just flat out dying, and so now they're a key part of the ship's um, ecosystem. Now they're valuable. In fact, you might, many in fact, even call them heroes for allowing life to go on. See, it's interesting questions like that, which is the primary reason I was drawn towards this game. As for the rest of it, it does have a fairly nice style here. It is a single view isometric only. You cannot turn the camera, which is a little annoying in certain circumstances, but it's not too much of a bother. The combat system is rather simplistic. We'll get to that in a moment as well. The main, perhaps, selling point of it is the idea that you've got this interesting world, rich in lore, and with really, again, very in-depth and complicated, in many cases, moral conundrums. See, here's the thing as well. Games can absolutely do political themes, no question about it. What I always react to, however, is a game that tries to preach to you. This game so far does not do that, bearing in mind it is early access and only like one chapter available. Let's take the main question, right? Liberty versus authority. On the one hand, liberty is a very good thing. It's a virtue that we all correctly hold in high regard. But if you are on a generation ship, falling apart with a failing reactor, you're already eating your own dead, literally, and all of that was caused by the pursuit of liberty above all, rebelling against the old regime? How much is liberty truly worth? Is it worth a degree of suffering? Maybe. Is it worth your life? Probably. Is it worth the life of everyone on board? Now it gets a bit more complicated. What degree of authority are you willing to stomach, nay, champion, in fact, to continue life? To have the promise of a better tomorrow when you finally arrive at your destination, this inhabitable planet? Hmm. Now that. That's an interesting question. Because again, you might say, oh no, liberty, give me liberty or give me death. Okay, well now you're dead. <laughs> and the entire, in fact, the entire ship is dead. Thousands, tens of thousands of people dead because you wanted liberty. How selfish is that? But at the same time, if you simply submit to the authoritarian fascist regime just for the hope of a better tomorrow, what if that better tomorrow never materializes? What if you never arrive at the promised land? And hell, regardless, you'll never live to see it, so why should you suffer authoritarianness just so somebody else might potentially reap the benefits? Hmm. 
That is interesting. Anywho, I've spent 10 minutes talking about just the setting, but again, I, I think it's kind of valuable because that is one of the main selling points of the game. Now, another one is the idea that you can solve quests in multiple different ways. So let's have a look at that, shall we? We've got a dude in here. Jed. Jed has buried himself in debt, 1,200 credits, and as the lowly little layabout that he is, he can't pay back the debt, and so, in usual RPG fashion, I now have to help him. And so, he knows of a decent mark where we can gain 1,200 credits. Immediately now we've got an option, right? And this is again one of the main things. You're supposed to have multiple ways of solving any and all quests. This is a promise often made by RPGs, very rarely kept. And so far, I'd say that this game does a better job than many of doing it, but I would still like to see more in the way of interactability, because right now we have a two options. We either just kill the dude and steal his shit, or we try to talk our way out of this. Maybe there could also be a stealth route, because there is a stealth system. Maybe I could try and have my stealth character Faith here steal the money. Maybe I could have a hacker character, because there is computer skills, that hacks into, her credit, into his credit stick and steals the money that way. You know, more stuff like that. Now, we are going to just try and talk our way out of this. Never underestimate the power of persuasion. Jed is not convinced, but uh, we'll see. Now, I've got a really high charisma character, so immediately upon stepping in the door, my disposition is already relatively high. As Black Will here is just like, mm, that's a handsome bastard right there. I will do almost anything for him. Right. You show up here, you best brought me what I asked for, says a heavyset bearded man. Registering more than one person at the door, he scrambles to draw his gun, you backstabbing bastard. I mean, he's right in many a way, but impersonate. So you've got three different types of uh, charisma talking skill. You've got persuasion, you've got impersonate, and you've got, uh, what's that one? I forget, but trust me, you've got several. Right now, and this is another thing too. What about allowing me? Oh, streetwise. That was that was it. What about allowing me the choice? And some choices will be better than others. Allow me persuade, impersonate, and streetwise, and then initiate a bonus attack all at the same time. That'd be really cool. Maybe even have other options like uh, I don't know, medical skill checks, uh, bio skill skill checks computer, like hacking stuff, lots of stuff. More of that, if you really want to sell the whole multiple options things, you need as many options as possible, and two, mm, not really enough. Now, in this case, we're going to be impersonating. So I'm going to say that I'm a friend of Captain Braxton, a local little wannabe warlord, essentially. Let's pick that. Now you'll see the disposition increases, and I also level up my impersonate. Success. I don't need his friendship. Space Black Will, he does lower his gun, indicating the opposite. This is another skill as well. You can actually spot little telltale signs in the character's uh, behavior. He says, I don't want his friendship, but he lowers his gun, indicating that, yeah, indeed, he kind of does. Now we've got three options are better. Attack, which is a bit basic, persuasion or streetwise. Now, if I didn't have this information, for example, maybe I would think that attack was the only option. But in this case, right, persuasion, I'm better at persuasion, so we're going to try to persuade him. Oh, but you do, if you want to stay in this town, that is, of course, you can always go back to the factory. But I hear you are a wanted man there. This friendship, what is it going to cost me, as Will, gritting his teeth? You catch on fast, friend. A thousand a month ought to do it. One month in advance, that's two grand you owe us. Hmm. Right, he's still not entirely convinced, but we're very close now. So, now I've got two yellow. I've got Impersonate, or I've got Streetwise, and the difficulty, of course, 3 and 4. Now, I've got Streetwise 2, so that's not my best option, but I've got Impersonate 2, not quite enough to make it a chink, a chink, a chinch, ch chink, chink, you know what I'm trying to say, a chinch, I thought, what's that, never mind, easy, there you go, English, but I only need a little bit, so I can probably just squeak by with an Impersonate here. 
and yes I can. Fucking bastard, says Will, throwing his credit drive. A bit shy of 1200 that's all I have, so take it or leave it. Thank you very much, kind and gentle sir. And there you go. Now I've gotten the money, I can cover, I can give it to Jed and I, he can cover his debt, or I can nuzzle my SMG gently up to the bottom of his jaw and pull the trigger. But Jed is a companion character, so I'm gonna be like, yeah, here you go. And you should probably follow me around now like a loyal puppy. There we go. The game has companion characters, uh, of course, as you would expect from a RPG game like this. The total number, however, is bound to your charisma stat, since I have 10 charisma, being me, of course. I can have three companions, like Evans, Faith, and Jed. Faith, 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 a woman, there you go. The companion characters will die immediately, by the way. If they fall in combat, they dead. There's no resurrection whatsoever, which is kind of bullshit. The game markets itself, in fact, one of the like opening things is like, this is a challenging game. Challenging is not the word I would use. Um, unfair is the word I would use. Unfair by design, in fact, is the term that I would then continue to add as well. Every combat starts at point-blank range, which really annoys me. Let me um, show you a, a little bit of a demonstration here in hydroponics. You've got, of course, a bunch of firearms, SMGs, pistols, rifles, shotguns, that kind of stuff, but you're never allowed to use them. You're never allowed to initiate combat in a sensible manner. We've got an excellent example down here on the storage level. Now, this seems like a nice and open area, right? Infested by poisonous evil frogs and nonsense. So you might expect that you might see like, okay, some frogs over there. Let's sneak up on them. Let's shoot them in the face. Hmm. Maybe I'll even have my uh, roguish character sneak up a little bit and initiate combat using the pistol. Then I've got um, my main character here with an SMG and a fairly high reaction chance, the ability to intercede in the enemy's movement. And I might have him in ambush to shoot down the frogs as they go over the choke point. No, you can't do that. Instead, this is where the frogs are. You can only enter this area through one area, and that is by going through the foliage. That is your only option. There's no other way to make this combat encounter, but to do it point blank range. So, yeah. So I can sneak which is a one character, and sneaking is almost pointless at this point in time, in my opinion. Uh, we can try it out here. So you can take Faith, for example, and you can start a stealth run. Now, as you can see here, no matter where I move, I'm going to get spotted. It's, it's red stars and yellow stars, and that's it. So every step I take has a chance of getting spotted. And if my character gets spotted, gets attacked, and gets killed, the character is dead permanently making this an incredibly terrible thing. Now, I can't theoretically make it through here, but to what benefit? Like, what what, what, what real gain is it? I can, uh, let's try and go over here. Uh, there we go. All right. Regenerate my action points. And there we are. There you go. And now I've managed to avoid the combat encounter by sneaking. Which is, a pr again, pure RNG. And if you fail, you just die. Straight up. Now, luckily, you do gain some experience points, which is nice. But if you wanted to fight your way through this, go for example here. And attack. It's killing time. Then this is the entire combat area. That's all you get. And this isn't like a one-time thing. This is every single time you're stuck in this tiny-ass area where initiative is almost the only stat that matters, which is annoying. There is a combo, there's a there's a cover mechanic, but it's, it's very, very, very basic. And it seems to be unidirectional for some strange reason as well. Now the frogs, because they have twice my initiative can just, you know, waffle on over and do their thing. 
and as they do their action, then I get mine. Now, this is the interesting part of the combat system, because you do get to do aimed actions, which is quite interesting here. For example, I can aim towards head. That decreases the target's perception, and on a crit, it might even be knocked out. Or I may aim at his legs, which decreases its evasion, making it easier to hit. And I can also potentially kneecap it. Or I can hit its arms, which decreases its um, chance to hit and his action points. In the case of these frogs here, let's see. Um, we can do a bullseye on the spitter frog. There you go. Staggered and dazed. Now, that used up pretty much all of my action points, unfortunately, so that's all I get to do with this guy. End turn. Then we got Faith here, which has a nice little swingy machete. We can do a double strike, and you'll see that that increases accuracy by 5, but increases the grayest chance by 15 as well. So if I do that, bing, bing, I do way less damage than if I were to do just like this, a normal attack. You see, it does seven damage straight up there, instead of four. So I gain one damage, but if I'd grazed, you see there, graze, hit, 77, graze, 100, rolled, 40. So I got a hit. If I'd done a graze, however, I might only do like five damage or something. Meaning that the flurry of blows up, you see there, like from seven to two. So there's a pretty major effect. Now we've got ourselves an aimed burst here. We've got a slightly better chance at this. You can also hold tab to e uh, show you all of the hit chances. Perception, skill, equipment, then minus weapon, minus attack, uh, minus penalty, recall control, evasion, and range. Now this one's a little bit odd because I can hit this frog slightly harder than hitting this frog. Really? I've got an SMG, and you're telling me I've got a hard time hitting the, the target right in front of me? That uh, seems a hint off, in my opinion. I could also do a short burst, but that's an even worse chance to hit, so aimed burst is my best option here. Let's see if I can uh, put down the spitter. There we go. A miss, a grace, and a hit. That is good enough for government work, and we can end our turn there. Now we've got ourselves a shotgun. The shotgun sadly doesn't have any spread, which makes me a little sad, really. Now, let's see if we can't decrease its action point even further. Oh, apparently I can't aim at the bullfrog's arms. Well, that's... I mean, that kind of makes sense, but still. Boom, grace, and another grace, right? Not enough to put it down, and I've run out of ammo, so let's just reload that. I was hoping to take that out completely, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. My arch character here is relatively heavily armored. The frogs crit like nobody's business. There's also a setting to begin with that allows you to determine the weight system of the combat. Um, for example, there's a draw system, so that you've got a certain amount of cards, basically. Say the card is like, you've got two graces, two hits, and one crit. So if you play all of your graces, you get two graces, then after that you can only hit or crit. There's also the ability that is that you can't get certain results many times in a row. So you can't get a critical miss more than once, for example, or you can't get a critical hit more than once and so on, to even out the balance a little bit more. And then you've got my setup right now, where it's true random, where all of it is dependent entirely upon your dice rolls. You can see a regular attack, faith hit bullfrog for 12, body armor 3 minus 3 equals 9 damage, melee damage crit 1, hit 72, grace 100. And I rolled a 47, so that's a hit, but not a crit, and not a graze either. You also gain learning points, you can see here. Evans gained six learning points in a rifle by using the rifle. That's another reason, too, that unless you want to just do a lot of sneak, you kind of have to choose, because you get the clearing experience, as you can see here, just what we did with sneak. But if you don't do combat, you're going to be less good at the combat as well. And it's a bit of a bit of a balancing around there. You may also notice that I got all of my hit point backs. Now that's a very neat thing because you don't have a whole lot in the way of recovery potions in the game. You do have some, like these regen needles here that give you 10 hit points, but it also screws over your stats. So you don't really want to be using them 
too often either. So reload my weapons, by the way. Now, let's head on over to the armory, not the armory, the pit here, and let's show you some of the other combat as well. That was a relatively easy combat encounter because it was just against, you know, three, four frogs, and I've got tons of dudes, nice and simple. Let's also have a look here at the skill set before we get into some combat against some human opponents. See, this is one of the elements that I both like and dislike. I really dislike the fact that the combat is in these little arenas. I don't like that at all because it reduces your tactical abilities massively. And it also kind of takes away a lot of the point in your weapons. For example, the grinder has a range of only, what was it, uh, three or something? Yeah, three, which is fairly short. But because of the all of the combat is in hugging distance, it doesn't matter, and so there's really no point for me to buy a Thompson submachine gun, which has better range, but costs more action points to use. Yeah, it's a little bit of a derpy setup, in my opinion. I do like, however, that the combat is designed around the idea of making you use some items. Now, the beginning combat is unfair due to the fact that it does a little bit of the Kenshi way of viewing things, where not only are you nobody special, you're the dude who skipped out on bench pressing class in gym, whilst everyone else is a seasoned adventurer and can hand you your ass on a silver platter with frighteningly little in the way of trouble. Whereas as soon as you get some equipment, that changes considerably. Right now, the damage reduction on my arch guy here is fairly massive, and stuff like SMGs, for example, with a high graze chance, I'm almost immune to it. Uh, which, by the way, is one of the reasons why I'm kind of regretting specializing in the SMG right now, and I'm probably going to have to pick up a rifle or something at some point as well. But as earlier, you can absolutely die in your first combat encounter in this game. There's a couple of thugs over here, and they can kill your character not only in the first combat encounter, in the first round of combat, before you even get to react, they can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, some people call that challenging, and I guess it kind of is, but... Honestly, I would prefer if the challenge was more centered around the idea of using the environment, uh, using cover effectively, using your items more effectively, rather than being so very, very reliant on gears and your two-hit charts. Now, let's uh, go over some of the items as well. This is what I like again. The reliance on using items like grenades to stack the um, stack the odds in your favor, right? A flashbang, for example, will blind the enemy, making it more difficult for them to hit, unless they've got stuff like a ballistic helmet, where you'll see a resistance optical 30. So I can kind of flashbang myself, but because of my fancy helmet, I will take far less of an effect of it. Now that's really cool. You've also got stuff like common respirator, allowing me, for example, to lay down a gas grenade. In fact, you can even set up like a special encounter. The gas low grade, for example, gives a damage type poison of three. Um, actually, gas low grenade damage? Eh, never mind, six. Huh, that's more than I remember it doing. No, poison damage six for three turns. Try that side. Oh, 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 I must have had an even shittier gas grenade last time. Excuse me. Which means that if I now have a rebreather, which reduces the toxic to three, I can operate within my own gas crowd cloud with way less damage than the enemy might have. Mm, see, that is rather interesting. By the way, you should have a helmet. Uh, that's a pretty good west you've got there, actually. I don't think I, think I have anything better than that. I do believe I've got some better boots for you, though. Here you go. What about three, two, three? Do I have a better jacket than that? I don't think so. I like the layered armor system as well, being able to have jackets and vests. That's kind of cool. You also got some sub uh, subdermal armor, making him a fairly tough little lad. Let's also give him a maintenance hard here, which increases accuracy a little bit. I'd love to have another rebreather, but sadly, let's give you a flashbang mid-grade on your belt as well. 
You also got implants, which is nice, armor implants, and also stat implants, like the motor implant would give me extra dexterity. Uh, speaking of that, I should also give you a look at the, um, the traits and skills and level ups, shouldn't I? Yes. And then we'll go and hand out some justice in the court. The ship does have a legal system in that a person is caught, and then he is thrown into an arena where he has to fight for his life. If he dies, he's guilty. If he kills his uh, attacker, the lawyer for the prosecution, then he's, you know, innocent. Nice and simple. Absolutely. Right, so when you level up, you gain the ability to add in a feat. What do we got here then? Critical thinker. Each skill level, critical chance plus one, critical damage plus three. Hmm, maybe. Quick fingers, cuts reload time. That's not really useful for me. Captain. Party members only. Accuracy 10. Reaction 20. Critical chance 5. Now that's a big one right there. You are basically are two of these. You can either play the game as a lone wolf playing solo, which, considering the fact that if any of your characters die, they're dead for good, might actually be recommended. I also got to say, the game wants to have well thought out characters, right? But they also want them to be perma dead in combat, and they want the combat to be ultra lethal to the point that characters can absolutely die in not just a single round of combat, but from a single attack if the enemy gets lucky. And you have no way of recruiting generic companions. Now that's just dumb, because that means that you'll just be save scumming even harder as you'll just reload the combat over and over again, because frankly, with only like three or four companions in the early access and ten in total planned, that means you can only afford to lose ten companions until you're out of companions. And then if you didn't pick Lone Wolf, well, I guess you're boned. Like, that's not a very good system, in my opinion. Maybe have Resurrection be very expensive, but there should be some way, or alternatively, allow you to actually recruit generic companions. So in this case, Captain is the obvious choice. Like, Accuracy plus 10, that's a pretty big deal. Critical Champ plus 5, too, that's a huge deal. That increases my chance to crit by a significant margin, so... Let us add that feat. What about Evans then, my little backline sneeper? I think he's uh, he's got sharpshooter, range, aim 10, penetration 10, that's already really good. Now, I think I want to give him the rifleman skill. Increase rifle accuracy even further, and plus 2 for each skill level. Very nice, because that'll give me a plus 2 based on skill level of rifles, meaning that he's going to have a pretty hefty modifier there quite quickly. Faith is my sneaky little assassin kind of warrior chick. She's already got a little bit of boost to evasion, but I want to boost her evasion a lot more, if at all possible, frankly. Um, mm, 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 mm. I just kind of want to boost her stealth, though. Maybe, maybe Butcher, Blade Accuracy, Reaction for each skill level. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. In fact, Gladiator, Melee Reaction, Grace plus 10, Grace Damage plus 2. Not bad either. On kill, six action points. That's nice, nice. But her, her, her damage isn't that great. Hit point plus ten and miss critical chance is capped at five. Not bad. Uh, not in cover, ballistic reason one, evasion ten, reaction ten. Now that's what I want because being a melee character, I ain't gonna be in cover much. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. I do like the focus on the feet system as well, very much so, because it it's not just a straight-up stat gain. Instead, it gives you a little bit of utility as well. So, let's get in here. A gang of vile road agents call themselves the Black Hand. These thugs make the living terrorizing traders passing through the factory. A group of regulators nabbed three of these miscreants, looting dead bodies at the scene of the latest attack, and now they're finally going to face justice. But are they even members of the gang? Only God knows for sure. But hey, we caught them. And so now we're condemning them. So uh, make your case. And again, you can see, like, again, why? Why does the combat have to start like this? I mean, come on, this is silly. This is silly. You gotta admit, this is silly. Start them over there. Start me over here. And hell, make the arena a little bit larger as well. In happen. Oh well. Right, I'm gonna put myself here. You do at least get a deployment uh, opportunity. That's something, I guess. Not that I can reach half of the cover anyways, but... Eh. 
We'll put Evans over here and Faith over probably here. That one, you know, you know, make some use of the cover. I get a reaction there. Get a graze damage shot. Nice. He tries to go into uh, going Faith. Right, he hurts me kind of badly as well. Yeah, you can't attack diagonally in melee. It's a little annoying. All right, so I got this guy. He's out in the open. All right, let's try and um, uh, bash her. No, I don't want to do that. Instead, I think I want to deal with his chance to hit. Boom, maimed. Nice. And then we'll just give him a good old-fashioned shot there. Ooh, a critical. Very, very nice. Now, since I can't act uh, attack him like this, I gotta go right in front of him. And in this case, too, I am actually gonna throw out a flashbang first to screw over these guys. There you go. Blinded. Now I'm gonna move in here. And I think I'm gonna go for his hands. There you go. Maimed. Nice. Uh, what's the action point of that? It's six. I think I'm going to go for another one then. For the head. Let's really screw up his ability to shoot. There we go. Nice. He misses me because I'm in combat. I got a reaction attack. Two grazes. Not exactly the biggest deal. Ow. Minus 13. And minus five. Christ. Right. So I'm already super duper retard or low. Uh, yeah. The, the combat is... This is the combat. It is... Yeah, and I can't really do anything but just run here. This is my most heavily armored character as well, mind you, and I couldn't even move him before he was down to a quarter health. Yeah, combat's harsh. Right, let's try to um, deal with this guy preferably. That's, that's graze, that's what I want. That's a good damage roll right there. Now let's get blunt action and moving into range there. He has a potential chance to hit me, but he didn't get it off, so that's fine. And then it's Grinder's turn. There we go, a little bit more lucky with the Grays. Fantastic. Right, now I need to start whittling down the numbers. I can probably kill this guy. Up. The sound design, too. Like, the the rifle is like... Hit. A little bit more of a crack in that rifle would, uh, would not uh, be out of place, in my opinion. Right. Now, I'm just going to beat the shit out of this guy. Try and derp him down as quickly as possible. Ah, shit. He must have hit me with the uh, action point reducer. Unfortunate. Jed is tanking quite nice. Um, Let's switch the weapon up here. No action point cost for switching weapon, which is nice. Pop him with a shotgun. Shotgun 2 sounds kind of pathetic. Just like, Pah. Not exactly uh, the shotgunniest of shotgunning sounds, in my opinion. You should also be very careful about uh, moving up like this. This is rather dodgy, but I want to get him in combat if possible. Uh, because when you're in uh, when you're in melee, it does not prevent you from shooting out of melee, which I think it probably should. To be honest, it probably should prevent you from doing that. And it was because I would use the aim action. Dumb me. Oh, a critical eleven. Nice. And also, you can also fire in melee as well, which also annoys me a bit. Now, you do have to, I believe, take a, a rushed shot to do that. Let's do a power attack, try and put him down. That did not work, and he gets a reaction as well. Uh, well, that's a little bit derpy, isn't it? Um, in fact, I'm not going to risk another one, because he, if he gets another reaction attack, he might just kill me. 5% chance to hit. Yeah, that's... That's, that's literally pointless. I'm really starting to regret bringing it to, uh, get specializing my dude in, um, SMGs. Really starting to regret that. Because rifles just seem like the superior weapon by such a distance. That is one thing I think they also need to work on, because right now the SMGs feel so much worse than the rifle. It's not even funny. And the rifle costs the same amount as well. I could fire one shot from the rifle, and I could do just as much damage, but I do so with a much, much higher percentage chance to hit. Maybe if you put more time into it, the SMG will eventually get better. That's kind of what I'm hoping anyways. But uh, yeah, some more battles on the weapons would not be uh, going miss either. Another thing too, I would like for there to be some way to analyze your opponent. 
so that you can... It, sh it should be a skill of some sort, but that is also done automatically so that you don't have to waste action points on it. Uh, for example, the ability to go, right, this guy has a breather mask and therefore toxic gas is going to be reduced against him. But since none of them really had uh, goggles, the flashbang turned out to be fairly effective, though... This being an RNG game, of course, it didn't really help me out much in the end as I kept getting hit regardless. And I almost lost that combat because if you lose your main character, the game also just simply ends. Kinda, kinda harsh. Kinda harsh. I don't know. The, um, the combat. I know, I don't want to dismiss yet. It's telling me I've got things to level up, but I'm not entirely sure what it's- Ah, right, I need to put stuff for that with Jet, that's fine, okay. So, some conclusions. Currently in Early Access, the only thing that's available is the first chapter. That's about five or six or so hours of gameplay, which is not a whole lot in my opinion. I'm also, I'm really starting to kind of sour on the idea of Early Access RPGs, because I feel like the moment I start really getting into the game, it's over. <laughs> okay. I was just kind of starting to enjoy myself. I was I was getting past the frustration of the really kind of unfair combat, and now you're done. Right. Well, the developer's point of view is that it gives them the ability to receive some feedback. And that's a good thing as well. Uh, one of the feedbacks that they're talking about at the moment, for example, is the question as to whether or not you should be able to install implants into your companions. Because the developer is really into this whole moral question thing, which I appreciate a great deal. And obviously, Evans doesn't have any implants. Maybe he has a belief that says that I don't want implants, like it's impure or something. And so if I just force him to get an implant, there's some serious ethical concerns about me gouging out one of his eyes and replacing it with a bionic part, you know? So they're currently discussing, you probably will be able to do it, but there might be some moral implications and some companions might hate you for doing it. Um, they might even just straight up refuse, which I think is a good balancing factor right there. The harshness of the combat, like, a lot of it just kind of disappears once you get some gear up, so that's nice. I think that once you get past the initially incredibly steep difficulty curve, where literally a couple of random thugs can kill you in the first, like, instantly, before you even get to move, things get a lot easier. And of course you can get around this by simply making a heavily combat-focused character. So if the combat really annoys you, don't do what I do and put everything in charisma because you want to be a smartass. Put everything in strength, constitution, and dexterity. Like, send your initiative shooting through the roof and have it so that you hit with hammers for like 20 damage. And voila! That challenging combat suddenly gets a lot easier. There's definitely ways around it, and I think that's a good way of doing it. The question, though, is, like, the primary selling point of the game seems to be the moral questions, which is interesting, but so far I haven't really felt that the game has had enough in the way of of consequence. They talk a lot about how they want the storyline to branch out wildly depending upon your choices, but right now there's just not enough of that in the game for me to make a decision on whether or not they fulfill that promise. Currently, the options are relatively simplistic. Talk to the person, choose one out of your three talky skills, or shoot them in the face with a shotgun. Not the most in-depth of role-playing right there, you know, so there is that. Still, it is also too early to judge it completely as well, so I think this does have a lot of promise. I'm liking it so far. I am enjoying the moral quandaries that the game's throwing my way. I think the combat needs some shorting up. It needs more cover, more cover. It needs larger areas, and you need to be able to take strategic decisions out of combat. Give us the ability to initiate combat. Like now with the frogs, for example. Nothing was technically preventing me from taking a gas grenade and just lobbing it over the area, and then waiting for the croaking sounds to stop. 
Or at the very least, maybe throwing a flashbang to scatter them instead of trying to sneak through. Since the end of the scatter was just them, you know, wandering off into the brush anyways, why couldn't I do that by throwing a flashbang into the clearing? Same effect, the frogs and hell. The frogs too are supposed to be non-hostile, right? So why can't I just walk straight past them? Are they gonna look at my gun and go like, Oh dearie me, that gentleman is intruding upon our private property, and he appears to be armed with a firearm. I say get him, frog friends! No, <laughs> of course not. They have no concept of a gun, they're not gonna attack me because I arm, I'm armed. Why are they a threat? Ah, stuff like that, little things that just... If you're really going to focus 100% on making the most complex role-playing experience you can, you need to think about these things. That's the problem too, because there are so many things that you're never going to get all of them. That's the difficulty of making a truly advanced, complex role-playing experience. But... So far, I think it's got promise, so if you are interested, definitely keep it on your wish list. I think it's probably a bit too early to purchase it just yet, unless you want to actively participate in giving them feedback. But if you like RPGs, isometric ones in particular, definitely keep an eye on this. Because, and hell, again, if you're interested in that kind of moral quandaries and you like games that make you think, I think this will be a very good one. Anywho, I'll wrap it up there. I have been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.